When a customer sees a Cardo, what they really see is a website or mobile apps and then a very friendly driver arriving at the door and giving them the groceries that they want. So we want it to be very simple for the customer. But behind the scenes, to make the business work, there's an incredibly complicated automated process of software and hardware to kind of produce a pure online proposition, which is highly efficient and optimised and gets people just what they want when they want it, with very little food waste. Everything from website, logistics, warehouses, algorithms, you name it, whatever's part of that system and the kind of technology is, is producing. Um, but alongside that, we're also thinking about how we can become a platform company, a company that provides um, an online grocery platform to other interna to international retailers, potentially. So it's done multiple things. I guess first to mention is the hiring of our team, the Catalyst team, um, which is a group of uh, agile and lean specialists uh, based in departments, helping teams to become more lean and agile, but also working together as a group to think about Akali technology as a whole and how we can improve um, that entire system. So our leadership team are passionate about us being agile. Um, they've given teams a lot of autonomy and flexibility to pick the working practices that best suit them. Um, they're passionate about us having high quality but delivering fast and learning as we go. They talk about a blame-free culture, a fail-fast culture, um, and having permission for the teams to be able to do those things really helps us to be agile. Something as a software developer that I've noticed is that we have demands from lots of different areas of the business and it's about prioritising those demands against each other. And Agile is really useful for that because it means that we can try and work out which um, request has the highest value to the business and we can constantly reprioritize those to try and make sure that we're always maximizing the value that we're delivering on any piece of work that we're working on. Mm, it's a good question. It's really difficult is, is the short, short answer. At the moment we have no one consistent way of measuring things like productivity across the business. So we're encouraging our teams to, to learn to measure things like their cycle time or their lead time um, and their throughput, things like uh, failure demand. Um, so at the moment we have uh, pockets of measurement rippling up and we're in the process of thinking, how can we get some more holistic measures? There are various pieces that we do measure as a business already, things like units per hour. Um, there's several measures for our, our CFCs, which is our customer fulfillment centers. So there are, there are pockets where we can measure certain aspects of our productivity and our effectiveness, and we can see where are our um, agile practices helping those things improve. But there are other pockets where we've, we've not got as much visibility yet. So that's an ongoing journey for us at the moment. So our kind of first 10, 15 years, we've moved from a lot of automation in terms of things like conveyors and automated IT systems to um, a few years ago, our kind of first uh, experience of robotics, moving from kind of uh, automated cranes into more autonomous robot arms and other kind of more advanced robotic systems. And that capability has built up over the last five years or so to be actually really cutting edge now, uh, including European research projects. because. The key to us is this pipeline between a customer placing an order and then getting them exactly what they want as fresh as possible. A lot of things we do in Ocado, you can solve, you could solve all problems, but it would get really complex very quickly. So we look at like 80-20 rules where we solve 80% of the problem and let humans solve the 20% of complexity that would just not be worth our while programming. So yeah, I think human interaction for now is very important to train the robots in all these things that we just don't know how to solve right now. I think there's two factors here. Um, first of all, an automation in the sense of software automation. So um, there are no manual steps between placing an order and having the item delivered. It's a, it's a clean flow of systems from place to place and understanding the exceptions that can happen. And at the scale of delivering millions of items a day, the whole thing has to flow like clockwork. So um, the second thing which lets us do that is actually controlling the software stack. So it's all our software right the way through. So we don't have any, any black boxes that we can't have control of. And then it's um, small incremental improvements while understanding the overall flow and keeping the system working. A lot more food will be purchased online in 2022. Um, I think secondly, it will be more immediate. So you'll be operating with shorter lead times, probably smaller orders and getting what you want when you want it. Um, I think also there will be less manual selection of products, less browsing through lists and a lot more kind of machine learning, smart, personalised shopping. So you'll get more of a here's what I think you want 
a just it approach. And I think also there'll be a big move to voice over clicking on screens. I think more of this kind of smart assistant approach is likely to be what we'll see. What we will see is large stores having to reduce the floor space that they dedicate to groceries because people will move to online um, quite rapidly, I think. Yeah, the, I guess it's, it's what's the next, next disruption that's going to come along? Because all industries now are getting disrupted at high rates. So it's spotting that next disruptive technology or approach or, or, or service and making sure that we're on top of that and we're adapting to it and we don't become stuck in our ways and, and stuck on yesterday's uh, either technology or, or business model.